Yeah. Nope, I did hear from him, so. Okay. Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. I'll call the July 14, 2014 school board meeting to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. I'd be happy to. Tim Meniger. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. He is excused. Alex Zachary. I Did you hear from Alex? So he may be coming yet. So. Okay. Okay. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Zygosinski. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. Okay, with six of seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Board norms and reflection, I would just note that the board norms are in your packets, in your blue folder, so um, we will ask that board members respect those as we move through the building or the meeting agenda this evening. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would so move. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Okay, I don't see anyone moving forward, so we'll move to reports and discussion. Food, service, meal, prices. Mr. Gasper. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Get this to work, we'll be good. All right, um, I'm here tonight to present my recommendation for meal pricing for the 2014-2015 school year. Um, as you know, when we make pricing recommendation, we take a lot of things into consideration, uh, specifically the performance results measures uh, that we have uh, in our program, <coughs> um, such things as uh, percent participation. We track those to see how we're doing um, as far as kids eating. Uh, our fund balance as a percentage of total expenditures. And as you can see by this uh, chart, uh, we're actually forecasted to be within the uh, target range for that uh, measure, which is a good thing. Um, nutritional value, we look at the nutritional value of the, of the meals that we're providing uh, to make sure that they meet uh, the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act rules and regulations. And we also look at area districts pricing. Um, as you can see by this chart, uh, the meal price recommendation for this year uh, for breakfast is still gonna be 10 cents lower uh, than the Mississippi Valley Conference average. Uh, and the lunch price will all be 11 cents under the Mississippi Valley Conference average. The Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act, uh, as you know, um, there's a minimum meal price requirement along with that uh, piece of legislation, um, it's mandated. We don't really have a choice. We have to charge an average of $2.65 uh, per paid meal, uh, according to law. Uh, right now, um, this past school year, we were at $2.41 on average. Um, the law does state, though, that we do not have to increase any more than 10 cents in one year. Um, so that is exactly what we're asking for. So our proposed increase for breakfast, you can see that in 2013-14 uh, we were at $1.40 uh, and actually had been at $1.40 for the past six years. Uh, this year, the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act does uh, change the breakfast regulations. Uh, surprisingly enough, instead of reducing portion sizes, they uh, are going to change the uh, fruit slash vegetable requirement from a half a cup to a cup. So we'll have to serve a whole cup which obviously will carry some expense. Um, in addition to that, there'll be some changes to the a la carte program. Um, the types of items that we can sell have to meet certain nutritional requirements. Um, 
which we suspect may decrease our sales uh, of a la carte. So our revenue there will drop. So that is why we're asking for the 10 cents. We're also asking for the adult price to go up 10 cents. Uh, and there's lunch proposed increase, as you can see, 10 cents across the board as mandated by the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act. Any questions? Any questions? Just a comment. I know that it's really hard in this transition time as we try to go to healthier food for kids because they buck it a bit. They're not used to it. They want more. And yet, it's such a good thing to do. And I appreciate everything you're doing because I know that impacts your budget. Um, and yet, every time I go <coughs> to your buildings and I eat your food and your staff's food, it's like better than I would get, well, I won't say better than a local restaurant because I love my local <laughs> restaurants too, but um, you do a wonderful job. And so I know the grappling with this is a tough one, and yet you're living within what you have to do. So thank you. It's definitely a balancing act, but uh, you know, at the same time, uh, this past year, um, we're not quite done with the numbers, but the participation looks like it actually went up <clears throat> from the year before, um, which I think sig signifies that we're making a lot of progress um, uh, with the students and, and their understanding what's happening. Um, the reality of it is with our program, we offer the double fruits, double your fruits and vegetables. So uh, they can take up to two servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit on any tray. Um, so really, the, they can get quite a lot of food if they really want it. It's their choice, so um, I think it's uh, it's going well. I do too, any thanks. Questions? <laughs> any questions? Okay, thank you, and this is not on tonight's agenda, but um, it will be on the next month's agenda, or next meeting's agenda, so. Thank you. If you have any questions, please forward them to Dr. Carlson. Certainly get a response. Okay, thank you. Then recommendation for early admission to school, Mrs. Krakow. Mrs. Krakow. Good evening. Uh, in your board packet, you have an issue paper <coughs> for a uh, recommendation for one child to enter kindergarten early. Um, I just wanted to uh, remind you of a few things in our policy as to how we make this recommendation. Um, policy 421 is the early admission to school policy um, under that policy, if a parent would like their child to attend kindergarten or first grade early, um, there's certain criteria that we look for. The very first thing is that the child must be at, for kindergarten, must be at their fifth birthday by October 1st. So if they meet that first little bit of criteria, then we would evaluate. Um, we complete the evaluation in June. Um, we use um, an evaluation tool that is developmentally appropriate for children that age. And then our school psychologist includes a, um, an interview with the parents. And when the evaluation is complete, they make a recommendation to me to um, advance the child either into kindergarten, first grade, or not, based on, on the evaluation. This child has met all the criteria established in our policy. Um, this child scores at the superior level um, developmentally. And so um, I am going with the recommendation of our school psychologist, Corey Cooper, to recommend this child for early entrance to kindergarten. Um, so that is what the issue paper is. That would be on the consent agenda item at the next meeting. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I certainly will entertain those. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Krakow. Okay, then educational assistance base wage rate. Let's see Melissa coming forward. Good evening. Um, so 8.3 <coughs> and 8.4 are very similar tonight. Um, 8.3 first is looking at the educational assistance groups. Um, as you may recall, this group um, did not recertify, so um, we had a little different meeting set up with them, but still followed the same 
type of agenda and schedule that we did with the other groups. Um, we met with them on June 24th and took the proposal, talked about the 1.563 that the board had approved um, we take to each group and agreed that the longevity would be applied. So once we took the longevity off that 1.563, we came up with a base wage increase for this group of 1.023%. Um, and then it was decided that we would put that in the form of a 15 cent per hour increase across the board on all classifications. Um, so that group then um, would have the increases based on the attached schedule that you received for those wages. So any questions on the educational assistance? And any we do have this on for consent as well for this evening, so. So any questions there? Okay, seeing none then, moving on. And very similarly <coughs> with the HOPE group, the Home and Office Professionals for Education, we met with that group on June 26th, same type of meeting, talked about the 1.563 um, total amount um, that the board had agreed to. And once we applied longevity with this group as well, since that was something they wanted to continue with, we ended up with 1.268% on total base wages for that group. Um, and again, we looked at a total cent per hour across the board and classifications for mm -hmm. that group, making it 22 cents an hour for their increases. So, and this again will be on consent as well. So any questions on either of those? Okay, thank okay, you, Melissa. Thank you. Then the turbo contract for student teaching and pre-student teaching, Dr. Carlson. We'll be asking the board at the next board meeting um, July 28th to approve our ongoing relationship with Viterbo University. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, mirrors pretty much what the relationship we've had for the past five years with the university. So, so it is something that we've done before and unless you have <coughs> questions, we'll be recommending this to you at the next board meeting. Any questions? Okay, then moving on to high school staffing, advanced placement <coughs> calculus, Dr. Carlson. And I know Mr. Baer will come up as needed, um, especially based on your questions or comments. But this evening, Mr. Baer and I would like your feedback regarding high school staffing, in this case specific to the area of mathematics. Depending on board member feedback this evening, we will determine if a recommendation is made to the board at the July 28th board meeting to increase staffing to accommodate a math course for the coming school year. As a result of the scheduling process, which occurred after the high school staffing plan was approved by the board, that was part of the staffing plan in early May that the board approved, uh, Mr. Baer has identified a potential increase in classroom sections in the area of math. And that sometimes happens when you work through the scheduling process um, trying to accommodate the changes in students' schedules. So in order to staff within the board approved staffing plan specific to the high school back in early May, he would have to cancel a section. So as a result at this time, he is considering canceling the second year of AP Calculus. It's AP Calculus BC. Since it does have a current enrollment at this time of eight students. As we have re reported in the past, um, Mr. Baer makes the decision on what courses to cancel due to uh, minimal enrollment early in the staffing process. Um, there are no guidelines specific to that, but he does make, uh, based on his judgment, uh, usually for a class with an enrollment of eight students. Um, it is likely that it would be canceled. However, in the case of AP Calculus BC, there is the likelihood that students would take this course at a local university in which the district would then be required to cover the cost of tuition. So if you look at a possibility of eight students enrolling in this course, um, the cost for tuition would be very uh, similar um, to this the uh, additional staffing that would be required for this course so we're not presenting a recommendation tonight for additional staffing to hold this course 
as we are interested in learning from board members your thoughts regarding the small class size as you know there's been discussion um, related to this in recent past uh, specifically at the high school and so based on your comments tonight then mr. Barry and I will visit and determine if we do make a request to the board to add staffing in order to keep the AP calculus course for the coming school year so this is we're listening want perhaps a little bit of guidance from you this evening so board thoughts well um, what what is it felt is it felt that it's better for the students to go to the Lake University for the experience or is it better for them to stay in the high school what is there a feeling for which one benefits the students more we like to believe it's better here well if it's better if it's better here and the cost is the same why wouldn't we keep it in house that's it makes sense to me keep it keep it in house it's a little different than the elementary situation because if, if we have to pay this outside the cost is the same <coughs> keep them in house other thoughts I know the the small numbers is something that came up in discussion sure. when we were discussing the elementary and it's you're right Gary it's not as clear-cut when it's eight but if there this would be a class versus a different class that what isn't offered at a local university or whatever um, this different. is much different yeah. and the value added to keeping them here I think that's a big thing and as we had discussed it that was one of the questions I asked but we really want to get feedback from board uh, dr. Carlson and mr. Bayer wanted to do that before they made a recommendation so well it absolutely to me would make sense to to keep the kids here not only I think they would get a better education in our own high school um, they wouldn't have the drive time they wouldn't have the hassle of trying to find somewhere to park they wouldn't you know it takes a lot of time out of their day in addition to spending time away from the high school so why not keep it here it's kind of a no-brainer is there a point where it would the scales would go if the cost were significantly higher than what it would cost if we to to offer that we would obviously keep them here but if the, the cost there was no cost difference I mean that's kind of the I think too in this situation it's you know it's kind of a balance it's about the same but is there a point in time where it would matter where you would think well it would cost us significantly more money to, to keep them here to keep them here or to send them on I, th I think yes as each <coughs> case comes up mm -hmm. you know if we use that the the adverb significantly higher then of course we need to look at it um, but what that figure is not that it's not important but then choices have to be made but this is like like Anita said it's like a no-brainer that and Gary too if the price is the same but we can keep our kids here I would love that and, and it, if I, and as these comments are made you may be helping us craft potentially some guidelines down the road mm -hmm. of distinguishing and so uh, we appreciate that because we've run into this before in the past isn't that we've always we've always kept them here if it was a wash if there was really no big difference in cost <coughs> haven't we <laughs> I mean I, maybe I, I I've just always assumed that we have and the situation here is that we and if you want to please come up to the microphone <clears throat> is that we because of the additional math um, section is also happening and then we have a low class size I don't know if those things have happened together often Anita that's kind of a hard question for me to answer because this is really the first time in <laughs> my tenure of doing this that we've had this particular scenario about the the cost and and the wash with it or have we sent them someplace else so that's a hard question for me to to answer at this point in time so sometimes that <clears throat> the exact timing of this is maybe a little bit different because we might have ended up with a small class size in the past but as a result as we go through scheduling uh, the timing in this case it just resulted as mr. bear worked through that this this math sections were filling up and so it just in the past it may have been different where he made of the decision or we may have made the decision together to still continue a class 
even though it was fairly small in size, maybe because of the cost, neutral, but also because we had already made a commitment to the amount of staffing that we had. So it could be a variety of reasons. And what we're talking about is the additional math section then possibly being handled. You're not talking about additional staff person, but possibly being handled by a current staff person, but it would be an overload? Correct, yep. So that's the extra cost. Yep. Well, calculus is pretty easy, I suppose. <laughs> Gary just Speak into the mic when you say that. <laughs> so your grandkids can hear you say that. How easy calc is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think you, know, you could, we will meet further and then just so of uh, the possibility that we'd be coming back on the 28th um, okay. July with that. Thank you. And the next thing is the high school assembly committee. I may ask Mr. Bear just to stay here just in Advisor. case. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, <coughs> there's an issue paper, and I'm not in your board packet, and I'm not going to read through it uh, entirely. But it is, it is uh, the belief right now by the administrative team at the high school that um, the timing is right to bring more attention to this. Um, it's uh, some shifting of responsibilities going on, even with the administrative team. But again, this position would be a person dedicated solely to advising our student assembly committee and um, I think the because of the importance of it that felt that it was time for for you know a person to really be specifically um, identified to take this on and so uh, what you also see with this recommendation is that they have uh, examined closely um, what has been happening with other areas and so from a cost standpoint we'd also be recommending to remove an advisor position that has not been utilized for years and that's specific to the high school field band advisor and so that's something that Mr. Bear has identified as uh, as far as a funding source for this so again this is the recommendation I think uh, again I fully support it and would um, plan to advance this to the board at the next, at the July 28th board meeting. But we would like to take your comments or questions at this time uh, so that we can respond to those either tonight or get back to the board. Any comments, questions? When you say assembly, committee now I know there's a different types of assembly so could you just maybe explain that could be everything from a pep assembly for an athletic team to an assembly recognizing our DECA kids that always do so well to now our FCCLA kids that do so well um, they also will work with the Renaissance committee to put on the assembly it involves it could be Veterans Day assembly the winter holiday assembly, pretty much every assembly that we would do in regards to student recognition and or student performances for our student body. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Bear. And then implementation plan for substitutes, Ms. Kate. <clears throat> Just one Okay, so we have <laughs> some things going on in our district um, that we have been looking into in the HR and business office that are requiring us to either make some changes internally or look externally. Um, those changes that are happening have to do with the Affordable Care Act and complying okay. with the um, the laws within the Affordable Care Act, um, the health reimbursement account that we now have for our health insurance plans, um, and the Wisconsin retirement system. Um, within the retirement system, there's certain limitations on what retirees can work once they start drawing on their retirement, um, which really limits them to subbing in our district, and those are the people we really want back subbing in our district because they've worked here they understand our district and how it works they know our kids they know how the buildings work so um, 
looking at some setbacks that might not allow us to have them in our buildings as much as we'd like to. So um, there's these three main things that we need to find a support system for that are happening. Um, so as we thought about this, we of course brought up what we could do internally. Um, and then we've also seen some uh, a company that does this externally. Um, so there is a company called Teachers on Call. Um, they are a third party vendor who um, we'll get into a little bit more of what they do um, on the next slide, but um, they're really the only people who do this. They um, hire out substitutes. Um, we've looked around and there's really no one else in this area that does this type of thing. Um, so the services that they provide um, would be all aspects of substitute teacher and educational assistant hiring and then the payroll associated with that. So they would fill all of our needs in those subbing areas. They do integrate with ASAP, which is the current system we use for our subs. Um, they would do all the hiring and payroll. They would perform annual and initial background checks on all of these substitutes. They would perform all the licensing checks. Um, and ultimately working with us to determine who should be hired and what our protocol is for hiring substitutes in our district. Um, so we would retain um, that right to have someone <clears throat> removed from our substitute list if that is something that um, we're not comfortable having that person substitute in our district. So ultimately we still would work with them um, to determine the substitutes that are in our district. They would handle the paperwork. Um, so as we look into the services they provide <coughs> and moving um, to having them hire our substitutes, we needed to determine what the impact was on our stakeholders. And first we thought about our current staff, so our teachers and our EAs. What changes would this impact um, them? And there really is no change for those employees. They currently use ASAP. They would continue to use ASAP to record all of their absences. Um, they would also still have the opportunity to assign their own substitutes like they currently do. So this would not have any direct impact on our employees. The next group was our current subs. So as we think about this transition or moving to this type of company, um, how would this impact them? Um, First of all, I think it would be a great opportunity for them because it will allow our subs to, our retiree subs, to work more um, based on those WRS rules and the Affordable Care Act. Um, they would be able to substitute more for us in our district. Um, there would not be those limitations on the hours worked per week. We would continue to pay the same substitute rates that we currently do. So teachers on call says, well, how much do you want us to pay them? And that's what they pay them. Um, they're paid weekly versus every two weeks like we currently pay our substitutes. Um, teachers on call also allows their employees to accrue time towards benefits and holiday pay and bonuses. So um, they would have additional compensation opportunities um, under their employment. Um, and additionally, any other district that teachers on call serves, they would also be able to serve in those districts. Um, so, and there's currently um, one other area district, but they are out of, based out of Bloomington, Minnesota, and have, I think there's 35 districts in Minnesota and 25 or 26 in Wisconsin that contract with this company. The last group that we thought about is the students. So um, ultimately, that is what we are all here for. And is there any impact on that group of stakeholders? And um, I think this would be in their best interest. It would allow us to get those retirees in. It would allow us to get those good subs in. Um, we wouldn't have to restrict any hours. Um, so it would just have that continuity in there, the services that we provide to the students in the classroom. Um, so there is a contract that Teachers on Call would offer us. It is a two-year contract. As we looked through um, budgeting for budgeting purposes, what would this cost be for us? Um, and as we combined everything, looked at 
the processing of payroll, the FICA, WRS, um, as we looked at the cost of background checks annually, um, and at time of hire, as we look at physical and TB testing, advertising for recruitment purposes, workers' compensation premiums, unemployment, comp or unemployment compensation. Um, I, I believe that we'll come out about cost neutral on this with the <coughs> contract that they um, would provide for us. It's a two-year contract. There is a clause in there that we can um, pull out even after one year if we're not finding that the services they would provide us are beneficial to us. So um, in addition to those hard costs that I listed, I think there's also some soft costs or opportunity costs that we would have. Um, as we look at our secretaries in the morning who are calling and filling all those unfilled jobs in ASAP who we couldn't get a sub for, that would all be taken care of by teachers on call. So that would free up some more time for our secretaries in the morning to help handle those student and parent issues as they come into the office in the mornings. Um, just looking at the time in my office for processing of new substitutes and the recruitment, and um, that would be an opportunity cost as well. Um, the advertising and recruitment time and personnel related issues with subs. The subs would no longer be our employees, so we would not handle any personnel issues um, that may arise with substitutes. Questions? So questions. What is the cost of the two-year contract? It is a, they charge 26%. So if we pay $100 a day for a sub, they would charge us $126. So Anita, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Okay, I have a, I have a lot of questions because the district I work in uses ASAP, mm -hmm. and so I'm just trying to figure out how this works together with ASAP. Mm -hmm. So, a, a substitute because you said the district would still use ASAP that this interfaces with ASAP. Yep. How does the sub still use ASAP and use teachers on call? We both so. We keep our access as the employer for ASAP, and we authorize teachers on call to link into our account. So they would be using our ASAP account and adding substitutes as they hired them. Okay. It's really transitioning the work responsibilities to a separate company. Um, and they're still putting in the subs in ASAP and processing all the payroll and we just cut them a check when they do the payroll once a week and if you say this sub did not work out well you just call yep you call them and they take care of removing the sub or would you have access to go in and do that but that would yep we can still have payroll. access but they request that we let them know um, so they know not to allow that sub anymore and do they district. have references have you talked to yeah. any other yep. school districts? I have um, a full list of references I don't have them with me but um, Eau Claire is signing on this fall um, and uh, let's see where were the other ones we looked at West, I mean, Westby has them, has them right Westby now. has them yeah Westby is using mm -hmm. them um, I think there's a lot of new districts for um, 1415 just because of the Affordable be. Care Act you can go on their website and see yeah. that there are, and they've highlighted yeah, the new I districts. I was looking on there the other day, and they were kind of scrolling <coughs> down. And, okay. Huh. Interesting. But what a way to actually, like, circumvent the mm -hmm. rule. And still <laughs> yeah, they're considered a 12-month employer while well, we're yep. considered a 9-month. So they have different hour laws to comply with the Affordable Care Act. Therefore, um, they can kind of avoid the situations that we would get into as an issue by limiting the hours for our substitutes. But you really do want to have people who've worked with the kids here before and have retired but know yeah. the school district mm -hmm. and know those kids come back. Yeah. It's ridiculous <laughs> that they would not be allowed to because of law, because mm -hmm. of you know the state laws. Yeah, and we do have a lot of subs who are retirees who say, well, I'm on WRS, so I, I really know. can't sub anymore this year because I've maxed, reached my limit. So, um, so they won't have that? No, anymore. that won't be an issue. Awesome. 
Yeah, it really, I talked to them at the convention, they were at convention, and it really does allow for some of the best subs, because they get called a lot, to to do mm -hmm. that, because they are employees of yeah. Teachers on Call yeah. instead of the district. Now, when you mentioned the fee, mm -hmm. it was 26%, mm -hmm. but if it's $100, and it's so, that doesn't, when we also have to pay unemployment and Social mm -hmm. Security and all of that, and that is right. not Right, now part we're not paying that, right. So, and that, isn't that usually like 10 or 12 or 13 percent anyway? Just the WRS and FICA would be around 14 and a half percent, so, um, and then we've got all the other costs that filter in um, with the unemployment workers' comp. I think just five unemployment claims a year um, would make this <laughs> cost neutral so that, but that's not something we have to pay on top it's just no the, they're paying it now they would be the employer so um, that would all fall back on them and you talked about the background checks yep they that's, would they comply pay for that with, too. yep and they'd make sure that whatever our standards are for background checks that they complete the same and that's included in that fee yep the, so we just have to pay the one time when the teacher or the sub is used. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, I had some questions, but I think your last comments, it was more for the public because mm -hmm. I think I got the problem, but I'm not so sure that moms and dads and citizens get like, what does that mean? Like subs can't sub a lot. And maybe if you just want to put that in layman's terms a bit like talk about what's the predicament for our district and our current staff who want certain subs but subs reach a max I don't I don't yep. know if so within the, the Affordable Care Act if um, any sub who works 30 or more hours a week it would create an additional insurance cost for us um, so that would essentially limit us to a sub working no more than 30 hours a week um, and when we have people who retire from the district it's best to get them back in our classrooms they understand our processes they know the PBIS they know how everything works in those buildings and with those kids um, and if we can max those people out at 40 hours a week um, that's essentially what would be best for our students thank you perfect and even if the sub was an elementary sub and subbing in five different classrooms or four different classrooms mm -hmm. that still counts yep. as total for the yeah. for the week so <coughs> any other questions we'll be seeking consent then at the July 28th meeting hey okay, thank you this is different for the district it's you know I um, they as they were, we were preparing the agenda, they presented this to me, and I go back to the day when Anita and Gary can probably remember when we talked about contracting out bus drivers and that whole thing, mm -hmm. and it was a real issue for us that people who work in the district and in the district buildings be aligned with the district vision and mission and that we have some control over that. Um, and this seems to allow for that. Yeah. Um, that was my first question, I think, <laughs> was just making sure that there was some input and, and that type of thing with the people that are coming into our buildings and working with our students. So it sounds as if that's not a problem and not an issue. So, And if it can take some of that administrative things off of um, our secretaries, I, I, Anita, you probably experienced that where you have to be making those phone calls. I'm picturing, <laughs> I'm just picturing, now how is this person at Teachers on Call going to fill in those like three hour chunks and then you join another two hour chunk to that sub? So, yeah, I, I wish them luck. <laughs> it's such a pain, but good. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. So then we do uh, move on to our consent agenda. There are five items, personnel report, financial claims and accounts, instructional coach position, educational assistance, base wage rate, and Holman office professionals for education base wage. So unless somebody would like to have something pulled um, to be considered separately, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 
Motion carries. Board member reports and discussions. I'll call on board members in the order of the roll call and ask for them to present any com comments or committee reports. Um, Mr. Menninger. Uh, just two quick comments this evening. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee did not meet this month, but uh, we'll be back. I believe our next scheduled one is uh, middle of August. And uh, the weather is very appropriate. And uh, for those of you who are regular followers, we only have <coughs> one more board meeting uh, before the fall sports start up. So uh, it will soon be upon us. All right, thank you. Ms. Collins? I have nothing. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Dunlap? That's so sad. <laughs> I, uh, we were talking about the students opting out of the home school district, et cetera, the last couple of weeks or so. I can tell you a story about I have, I have brand new neighbors next to me, uh, right across the street from where you used to live there. They bought the house and I said, we're asking where they're from and they said DeKalb and they had two students, one is starting school next year. And I said, well, how did you end up here? And she said, I did my homework and I did a lot of research and I want my kids to go to Holman. And that made me feel so good, because she didn't know me from Adam, you know, but it made me feel so good that she would, she did her homework, she said, and I did a lot of investigation stuff, and she said, I want my, my kids to go to home, and that's why she bought a house in the home and school district. That's good. And I thought that was so nice. It made me feel so good. That's great. That's all I have. Thank you, Gary. Ms. Jagosinski. Uh, I have nothing at this time because personnel and governance did not meet this month. Hey, okay. Ms. Mayor. Um, just a thank you to two former members of SALC who are resigning due to different situations. Nicole Crosby <coughs> who's moved on to her, I think her hometown of Winter, right? Um, she was a staff member on our, on our committee and Anita Dalby who is like the world's best snowbird that I know and we're all jealous of that but she can't make many meetings so they have both resigned. And um, Heather Retzloff from our middle school, who is also a counselor, which I love, and our first rep from middle school that we've had in a number of years. So I'm glad to have a rep from middle school has agreed to serve in our committee. And Natalie Allen, who is a parent, um, has agreed to fill Anita's place. So um, we're good to go for the fall. Um, I'm excited about that. Wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> Um, then I and I don't have anything this evening either so I keep the moving the meeting moving um, board meeting scheduled July 28th is our next board meeting and then August 11th and 25th are our next board meetings for August and it's going to be a little bit different I think if you recall we did make a motion last year at the annual meeting and our annual meeting will be in September this year it gives us a little bit more time to prepare um, the the budget and those kind of things for that meeting then September 8th we have a regular board meeting as well on um, the agenda also this evening are two administrative rule reviews the first is evaluation of personnel dr. Carlson yes the board reviewed this policy back on <coughs> October 10th 2012 so a little while ago but the policy has been on hold based uh, primarily on the planned implementation of the teacher and principal educator effectiveness evaluation <clears throat> system and um, while changes continue to be made at the state level regarding the new evaluation system we do believe we need to move forward with revising our current policy to reflect the known changes at this time the copy in the board packet is not a current cl absolutely clean copy you notice which is a little bit unusual we've started administratively to already look at it and to start to make some notes and some things that we know um, will need to be changed and other possible suggestions. You'll notice that there has been a guideline statement, for example, for administrator evaluations attached to the policy, but no other guidelines for other employees. And so um, we, we, that might be an example where we make a recommendation to the board and personal governance committee to place for example all guidelines such statements in the specific assessment manuals for each employee group that would be just an example of a possibility so for tonight um, you're asked simply provide that philosophical review which again there was some conversation back what will be almost two years ago um, and so that when the personal governance committee 
meets in August, uh, we can continue that work. I would say that between now and that meeting with the Personal and Governance Committee, administratively, we, we've really heightened this so that we can um, really move this forward even with the Personal Governance Committee because we do have some obvious things that need to be changed and perhaps then also impact and reflected in the employee handbook, um, which is another issue as well. So looking for general comments that you have may have and, and uh, more details to come. Any comments or questions? I think a lot of this, I think as we discussed, we'll go through the uh, Personnel and Governance Committee and then come here, but um, I think we just wanted to refresh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this has been on the <clears throat> annual, th this has been on the cycle uh, as a <coughs> must do for some time. And yet we've, for the last two years or so, we've held it. And so we, uh, we'll get back to it. I think the big, issue is the educator effectiveness evaluation for that to be formalized and all of that we didn't want to necessarily make a lot of changes and then have to go back and make a lot more changes so um, okay thank you and then the next item is administrative rule regarding ch employee child at work and you received a copy of that um, perspective or perspective not one of my potential um, change to this policy and it, this is an interesting policy it has been before the personnel um, and governance committee um, dr carlson took it also to the um, what is employee relations team mm -hmm. the er the employee relations committee and and originally the the <clears throat> uh, policy we realized or discovered that we were not using the policy or we weren't following the policy as it had been written and um, it, the way it originally was written that ch uh, staff should not have their children at, at school with them unless it was an emergency or some unexpected kind of situation, um, but that it shouldn't be a routine thing. And then it, as we started doing some digging, we found that that wasn't actually how the policy was being handled um, in the district. And so there was a lot of discussion. I won't talk, Dr. Carlson, you can maybe talk about the response in the Employee Relations Committee. I think there was acknowledgement that we, as Ms. Hancock said, we were not following the policy or the administrative rule that we have in place. And so really looking for feedback from that group on what might be workable. And um, their great conversation that then came back to the Personal Governance Committee, um, which really results in a draft that you have before you tonight. And by the way, as you saw kind of the the original draft even as recent as I was looking back the April 14th board meeting so if this looks somewhat familiar there's a reason why however what's different is you have some additional highlighted text to this which is a little bit more of a, a concept and that really talks about um, is there a way to uh, look at the age of children and look at uh, is there a difference between supervision requirements by a, an adult and how much do we expect our teachers slash parents for example at the building take on the responsibility of supervising their own child and so on or is there a point where it may require less supervision mm -hmm. and yet the child is still on on our property and in our buildings so trying to look at a concept that maybe identifies a, a certain age or threshold that the parent maybe uh, releases some of the responsibility and, and, and uh, acknowledges the fact that there is a less requirement for supervision. So it's a concept where we're looking just for uh, your, your thoughts, reactions to this. Uh, we still have more work to do to really confirm how much of this that uh, uh, we could really put in place but it, so right now it's still a, a concept and um, I know that again several here are part of that have been part of that discussion so I would invite Anita and Cheryl and Jay and others to um, make some additional comments otherwise we'll take any questions you have or thoughts 
comments? Just to comment, and, and I conceptually like the plan, I just want to make sure that either the uh, uh, district attorney or the uh, you know liability insurance company has taken a look at these waivers too and make sure that they feel that they are uh, compliant and would withstand any challenge. Throughout the process, we have had some legal review, and again, this idea of of ranging all the way from, and I think we reported out previously, some just take a firm stance, a very conservative <coughs> approach to all of this, and just simply, it's no. It's no, it's no, it's no. And we, I think we've been, based on some of the feedback and input we've received, um, keep searching for um, something other than just no. But we have, uh, even with that, we, we continue to get some um, legal counsel on, you know, waiver, and Mr. Manager mentioned the insurance and so on. Is there a way through some waiver agreements that we could still perhaps get at something? So, thank you. Any other comments or questions? I know we, our personnel and governance committee, we have people that work in personnel at a manufacturing firm and healthcare, and you can just imagine the wide variety of opinions we've had. So that's why we brought it here a few times so that we could have a good discussion. Um, we'll take this back to that group. We also meet in August, um, and then we'll probably firm up some um, of these, and then we can move forward. We really didn't want to because people who have accepted co-curricular, especially co-curricular, I think was the biggest area where we saw that the implementation really was different than what the policy was. And so we didn't really want to impact that because people have signed contracts with that. And we've heard from them that they wouldn't be able to do it if they, you know, and we don't want to stop that from happening too. So, um, but I think the language, the legal language and the liability concerns, I think, um, as he said, we've reached out to the school district's attorney and um, feel comfortable with that, and we will pass it by him. And any final, absolutely, yeah. right. Okay. I, I thank you for that um, creative problem solving because we are, we are a kid-oriented place, and a lot of our staff have lots of kids, but they also serve us in many ways. So um, thank you because that's not an easy thing to do, <laughs> as Tim said, to, to make it legal but also to make it friendly and, and keep the staff we want for those certain jobs. So thanks a lot. Thank you. So then it is time for board meeting reflection. Any other thoughts about the meeting this evening? It certainly time-wise went very well. So it was almost like Anita was in I know. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I was ready in case your cough got really bad. I was step so down. then, Ms. Mayor, if you'd like to read the motion for the executive session, please. I would be happy to. Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C for the purpose of considering, reviewing employee compensation, and for reviewing the district administrator's performance evaluation. Is there a second? Second. And um, Ms. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Tim Manniker? Yes. Lisa Collins? Yes. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Tom Cruise is excused. Cheryl Hancock? Yes. Anita Jacosinski? Yes. And Kate Mayer? Yes. Okay, we'll take about a two-minute break, and then we'll come back into closed session. <laughs> 